expansion of the religion and of the uh, empire, within 50 years of the death of the Prophet, almost the whole of Africa, uh, you know, Central Asia, right from the Atlantic till the gates of India get Islamized. The Byzantine Empire, the Sassanid Empire, all of that. But do we realize that from the Arab invasion of Sindh in 712, it took 500 years, 5 centuries to establish the first Islamic Sultanate in India, the Delhi Sultanate. So for 500 years our poor ancestors were pushing back, pushing back and the Arabs could not conquer beyond that narrow uh, border of Sindh. And who were these people? It was people like Lalita Ditya, it was Bappa Rawal of Mewad, it was Nagabhatta, it was Kulakeshin, it was Danti Durga, all names which don't strike a bell in any of our minds because we are not told that. Uh, part of our past. So we are not a nation of losers. We've had our ancestors who've been constantly pushing back. There have been people from the state I come from, Karnataka, who had this lady called Rani Abbakka in a small little principality of Ullal in coastal Karnataka in Mangalore and she manages to vanquish the Portuguese. The mighty Portuguese fleet in the middle of the night using very rudimentary uh, you know, technology of the ammunition put into coconuts ground coconuts which was plenty, uh, plentily uh, you know, available in the coastal areas that was scraped out in that the ammunition put and in the middle of the night these hurled missiles burn an entire Portuguese fleet and that news goes all the way to the Shah of Persia and he is quite uh, you know, astonished to know who is this uh, you know, queen in this little principality of India who has managed to vanquish the Portuguese. Similarly, in Kerala, you had someone like Martanda Varma who managed to ensure that the Dutch East India Company was completely decimated. The, at the t that particular point of time in the 18th century, the Dutch uh, East India Company was highly expansionist, one of the first to be listed in the global stock markets and stock exchanges, and their axis of power was stretching from almost Africa to Japan and India coming in the middle. But there was a battle called the Battle of Kolachal where Martha and Varma defeats the Dutch and after that their entire, uh, you know, uh, colonial ambitions in India actually collapse. But in any other country you would have Martha and Varma statues adorning every street square. Every child would know who Martha and Varma is. But perhaps today even in Kerala, thanks to the Marxist virus also that abounds there, I'm sure not many people there to know who this uh, gentleman was. So there are numerous such examples. Uh, Rani Naiki Devi of Gujarat, a woman, uh, Chalukyan uh, you know, princess, who manages to defeat Mohammad Ghori. We always talk of Mohammad Ghazni came 17 times, Mohammad Ghori came so many times. What were we doing? Were we just sitting as, uh, you know, lame ducks? waiting for the next invader to come and plunder and loot and uh, murder all of us. Naiki Devi destroys and defeats Mohammad Ghori in a battle called the Battle of Kasarhada, which was fought in 1176. And so, uh, you know, anguished is Ghori that, you know, he is defeated by a woman that he never turns towards Gujarat again. So there are numerous such, uh, you know, tales of valor. And I'm not talking here of empty jingoism, you know, chest beating and saying, Mera Bharat Mahan, everything about the past is great. No, there were mistakes we made too. And that is why we were colonized. But I think at the same time, a, a, a holistic view of what history needs to be. I think unless that is provided to all of us, having that self-respect, having that confidence to move forward to 2047, I don't think that will be possible.